Well, good morning and welcome to worship here on this third Sunday in our Easter season. My name is Jeremy Grenhart, and I am the music director here at Christ Lutheran in Bethesda, and I'm also helping to produce our worship videos uh, in this interesting time so that we can continue to worship together and bring the gospel into the world. Amen. Well, if you are an old friend, uh, we'd like to welcome you back. It's nice to see you and thanks for being with us. And also, if you are new to this space, if maybe you re received a link from a friend or even you just stumbled across us on, on Facebook or, or other social media, we just wanted to take a moment to let you know that you are most welcome here. Uh, we believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ is expansive enough to offer something to each and every one of God's children. Amen. Well, the way we kind of start our service most of the time is, is we take uh, maybe stock of what has happened uh, in our lives and to us, among us, during the week. And if there are things that we need to unburden, this is a time that we just kind of confess them to God. And this is different for each and every one of us. So what we're going to do is just take Take a moment of silence and bring those things before God. Amen. Amen. And as we come back together, uh, I'll give you some good news. It might be the best news you get all week. Uh, that in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, all of your sins are known and forgiven. Amen. So we're going to move now into a time of song. Uh, and if you've received your, your worship bulletin, you can, uh, in the e-news, you can pull that up. And if you'd like to be on our e-news so that you can receive, uh, you can receive the order of worship and the gospel, you can leave uh, some contact information in the comments below. You can find Christ Lutheran uh, on the web or on Facebook. Uh, or you could just look me up, Jeremy Grenhart. Uh, personally, I'm all, all over social media. And you can just say, hey, could you please pop me on that list? And it would be my pleasure to do so. Uh, but right now, if, if you'd be so kind uh, as to stand and join us in song. <laughs>
Today's reading comes from the Gospel according to Luke in the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 35. Please join me as we reverence the word. Now on that same day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus. It's about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all the things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came to them and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other as you walk along? But they just stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who has no idea about the events that have been going on in this place over the last few days. And Jesus asked him, what things? And he said to them, the things about Jesus of Nazareth. He was a mighty prophet in deed and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and then crucified. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it's been three days since all of this has happened. And moreover, some of the women in our group actually have astounded us. They were at the tomb early just this morning. And when they didn't find his body there, they came back and told us that they had seen a vision of angels saying that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and they found it just like the women said, but they didn't see him. And then Jesus said to him, how foolish you are and how slow, just slow of heart you are to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them, things about himself in all the scriptures. And as they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is almost over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table, he took bread and broke it, and he blessed it, and he gave it to them. And at that point, their eyes were open, and they recognized him. Then he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, were our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures up to us? Well, that very same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying that the Lord has risen indeed, and he's even appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road to Emmaus, and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. 
the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Well, so here we are, and you know, I got this brand new custom-made pulpit. Uh, I got it made to look exactly like uh, a beat-up old music stand. Truth be told, it's a beat-up old music stand. Uh, but this stand, like the Word of God, is well used and keeps coming through for me in the clutch. Amen. Well, you know, we open our, our story this morning in a pretty familiar place. And the disciples, kind of as usual, are a mess. They are distraught. They are fearful. They're not in a good place. We've seen that before, right? And God does something pretty familiar, too, where he decides, okay, uh, you're a mess again. Uh, how am I going to minister to you? And we see a familiar move where he says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send a messenger. Uh, that's not the first time God's done that. Uh, and he sends Jesus to go converse with Cleophas on the road from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And they talk for a while. And I guess the question that comes up is, if you send a messenger, what's the message? Well, I think the, the clear message for the Easter season is that the stone has been rolled away and Jesus has risen. He is the Messiah. We're clear about that now. And I wondered that, uh, you because know, I think we think sometimes that, that the stone was rolled away so that Jesus could get out. But I was curious as to whether in fact, the stone wasn't, wasn't rolled away so that the believers could get in. You know, and I wonder sometimes if we have boulders or stones in our own lives, maybe some that are put there, or some that we have just put there ourselves that prevent Jesus and others and faith from, from reaching us. And if the work that we have to do isn't helping to move them out of the way. <clears throat> well, you know, I think one of the most interesting parts of this story, too, is that uh, Cleophas and his companion, neither of them recognize Jesus. And I think we got to ask ourselves why. You know, I can speculate. Well, maybe they didn't expect him. Right? And I wonder if that is similar to the way a lot of Christians operate, right? We, we go to church and we have a prayer life and you know, maybe we read a little bit of scripture and go through some of the motions, but when it really comes down to it, there's no actual expectation that Jesus is going to show up in our lives and do something, right? So maybe Cleophas had just no expectation that Jesus was actually gonna show up. Or maybe you look different after a resurrection, I don't know. Uh, maybe Jesus had a, a completely different swagger to him after he had finished up dealing with uh, the problem of sin and death and just overcoming that. You know, maybe, maybe he looked different after that. Or, this is what I suspect, Maybe Jesus didn't want to be recognized because he had some teaching that he wanted to do. And truth be told, I'm not much of an academic. I don't like classrooms. I'd rather be outside or behind my instrument, something like that. However, if Jesus was going to offer uh, Old Testament survey course 101, I, I would surely like to attend or at least audit that class. You know, I would love to have been there as he explained to Cleophas about the rainbow that appeared to Noah after the flood. I sure would have liked to have been there as he explained how David defeated Goliath with just a stone, the stone that the builder refused and that later became the chief cornerstone. This is Jesus talking, teaching about Jesus. I sure would have liked to have been there to hear him talk about Joshua and how they crossed over into dry land. I sure would have liked to have been there as Jesus talked about the foreshadowing of forgiveness 
that God showed David after his transgression with Bathsheba that later inspired him to write the words, Create in me a clean heart, O God. And I would have loved to have been there as he explained how Moses held out his staff, parted the Red Sea, and took the Israelites, the chosen nation, into the Promised Land. That is one lesson, brothers and sisters, I sure enough would have liked to have heard. But why did Jesus choose to do it this way? Just having a conversation with just two people on a dusty road from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Why that? Why not send out like a broadcast on CNN or the BBC or the emergency news, whatever? Or why not send out like a, a governmental decree? You know, something that was, that was bigger or, or, or grander. I thought we might take this time to examine a little bit whether we might be like or not like Cleopas as we go through this pandemic together. And I think he's taken the mindset of, well, I'm waiting. I've waited a little bit, you know what I mean? Uh, I waited Friday and Friday night, and I waited all day Saturday. You know, I got up Sunday, I really didn't hear anything, so, you know, I'm waiting. I mean, I wanted to, I wanted to believe. You know, I was kind of hoping that you would have been the savior of America, I mean Israel. You know, and I, I, I could have believed, I could have believed if you had just enacted, you know, there's two or three social policies that I'm just really passionate about. And if you could have seen your way clear to move them through the, the bureaucracy and the red tape, I, I, could, have, I could have believed that, you know, and I, I could have believed if we, if we just had better leaders, you know what I mean? It's like, I really, I just can't think that this is what God has, has intended, you know, and I could probably see my way clear to believe in a risen Christ if we just had like some better leaders. Um, or I could believe if you could just make other folks, I mean, not me, I'm not talking about, if you could just make other folks see what's real and important during this pandemic, right? If you could make them see that, then I could see my way clear to have a little faith. <clears throat> well, if that's raising some red flags for you and you're saying, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't sound right, Jared. It's because it's not. Let's examine that for a little while. What are the common factors among kind of those, those points that I just outlined. There's nobody here either. I could pan over to my couch, but you know, it's a camera crew of one people of God. Um, so I'm just gonna have to give you the answer. What we're talking about is these are all externalities. Right? And if you have your serenity prayer memorized, you know that that's about trying to figure out, okay, what are the things that are in my wheelhouse that I'm gonna worry about? What are the things that are outside of my wheelhouse that I really don't have to worry about? And can I get a little help discerning the difference between the two? Mm. Uh, and I can tell you not all the time, but, but most of the time, those externalities are not in our wheelhouse. Uh, the verbiage that one of my favorite thinkers, uh, Brene Brown uses, she calls it your side of the street. I have my side of the street that I gotta worry about and your side of the street that I don't have to worry about. And you can package this up any which way you want, okay? You can put this concept in a moralistic box and you can wrap it up with some altruistic wrapping paper and maybe you even found at the dollar store like some, you know, a Jesus talk bow that you put on the top of it. Package looks real nice. But underneath all of that, the desire to, to influence these externalities is just a, a very cleverly packaged, very cleverly disguised play for control and power. I mean, how incredibly human. Right? And my mind takes tangents sometimes, and as I was pondering this, uh, I thought of 
I thought of a poem, the, the, you know, some of the older people might remember this. It was a poem by Gil Scott Heron called The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. Uh, and Spike Lee got a hold of that and kind of, uh, he, he's a much more militant cat, which is, that's okay. But Gil was coming at it from a, a real different place. And I listened to an interview with Gil talking about this poem. And what he was really getting at was that, hey, if you take the premise that revolution is change, fundamentally, first and foremost, it's just change, uh, that this change or revolution, it's primarily going to happen at home. Right on, and it's going to happen in our, in our hearts, and in our minds, and in our prayer, maybe with our music, and in our meditation. Right, so that's kind of the exact opposite of like a a giant public policy, <clears throat> or or some sort of um, mass awakening. And maybe that's not attractive to us, however. Maybe it's not attractive to, to guys like Cleophas either because it's not very glamorous. Um, and you can't virtue signal privately. Also, this work can be super, super slow. And we've been conditioned to think that waiting is bad. That's joke number two. I got you again. I got you again. My humor is real dry, people of God. But what we learn here is, is, is this work that we're talking about, the work of letting Jesus in, the work of moving that stone out of the way so that some of this stuff can get in, it is deeply personal, introspective, and sometimes really slow work. And sometimes we act more like Cleophas, where we're waiting on a we're waiting on a spectacle, right? something big and external to motivate our faith life, when in fact Jesus has been walking right alongside of us the whole time. And maybe Jesus is kind of a revolution, but maybe the kind that isn't going to be televised. And that raises another question for me, which is, what do we do when we finally realize, right? Let, let's pretend like we've gotten to that point. What do we do when we finally realize that Jesus is walking along the proverbial road with us and then literally sitting at the table with us? Let's examine this um, using that, that same uh, internal and external dichotomy. When we are outwardly focused, we tend to concern ourselves with how we are going to be perceived by others. We do that because that's what we're doing, right? Do I look, right? This is an optic game. Do I look generous? Do I look prayerful? Uh, am I outwardly you know, concerned with the right social issues, and am I doing that in the right way, and am I virtue signaling just enough on Facebook and Twitter to look like a good person? And I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but keeping that almost Oz level of illusion, or maybe delusion, up 24-7, it's exhausting. And it leaves you very little time to actually have a relationship with Jesus or with each other, knowing that Jesus is right alongside me. And he always was, and he always will be. Now that's a game changer, right? That's enough to revolutionize how I'm thinking. Because when I know that, then I know that my value as a person comes from within. Right? My value as a person is intrinsic. That's important. That's, you know, if you want to take one thing away 
from this message, know that your, your value as a human being, it's intrinsic and no one can take it from you. Also, faith that comes from within like that, that has a confidence. And that's different than to say uh, arrogance, and it's different than saying it, it's full of sound and fury or pomp and circumstance. It's just a confidence that comes from knowing that no man can hinder me. It's a confidence that comes from knowing that because Jesus is by my side, no weapon formed against me can prosper, and that I am valuable. I am valuable even when I am not trying to please everyone else all the time, and that every part, every part of me is valued. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Check it out. It is all known, it is all forgiven, and I have been redeemed. And people wonder if church is still relevant. Hello? In closing, I'd like you to consider this. The human condition, that was around long before COVID-19, and it's going to be around after we deal with this virus too. Another way of putting that uh, is sin has always been with us. It was with us before the virus, it's with us now, it's gonna be with us afterwards. So the, that's the constant, if we wanna use scientific terms. The variable is how we respond to it. Do we want to do the difficult work of moving some of those stones away so that there's some space for Jesus to come in and work on us or not? So I'll leave us with an invitation as we go into the week. Lord, help us to look for Jesus in unlikely places and help us to be open to untelevised revolutions of the heart. Brothers and sisters, that's the good news for today. And to that, let the people of God say, amen. Well, thanks, Jer, for those insightful and thought-provoking words, amen. But in all seriousness, uh, if those words resonated with you at all, uh, please share this with somebody. Right? The gospel is its not for us to hold on to and put in our archives. Please, please, please share this. Send a link, share it on social media, sit down and watch it with somebody over a cup of tea or a coffee or your favorite beverage. Please, please, please share this. We are once again going to move into a time of song, actually about opening uh, the eyes of our hearts. So I'm gonna ask you, as you are able to please stand and join us, amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I wanna see you. I wanna see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up. Shining the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, holy, holy. See you high and lifted up. Shining the light of your glory.
Sunday Church. We now invite you into this time for our prayers for the people. We ask you to take a position of prayer that best suits you in your space. Just a little bit of a note and tidbit about our prayers. We regularly try to write these prayers based on what's happening in our community, our world, our church, and individually. We would want to encourage everyone who may have a prayer that he or she um, would like added to the press to submit them to us. You can actually submit them to uh, give Jeremy a shout if you'd like to um, in one of the messages that you have uh, to uh, contact him. Or if you'd like, submit them down below in our comment box and on, on our YouTube page. We would love to add more words that reflect us a little bit more meaningfully in the hope that we could continue to connect um, with each other and with God. For our world. Sometimes we think that our problems are the only ones that are important and that suffering is phenomenon specific and unique to our person. We are encouraged to believe that as people and as a nation that we are on our own. We want to pray for more ways to understand beyond ourselves, more ways how to love, protect, serve, and support each other. We also pray for more sensitivities to issues that might affect us all in the world, in our backyard and everywhere in between. May this introspection reveal and illuminate the fact that we are all more alike than unlike. Jesus confronted systems that were held in place for hundreds of years in order to fulfill God's will. Touch worldly conscience on behalf of those burdened by oppressive laws and give us the courage to join them in their struggle. Let peace among people and nations be a reality and not a dream. We continue to rebuke oppression of any kind and we ask you to make us all active instruments of your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Lord, please hear for our community we continue to pray for those in the front lines of COVID-19 efforts may they know your protection and peace there are many unsung heroes whose efforts might not be brought to light we may have family members or friends whom we pray for and remember regularly, but we do we take a moment to necessarily think about those that we don't know or see? Help us to remember, pray for, and be thankful for those people too. While the media may seem to be an unending in blares of corona-related messages, um, let us remember to let us remember how God shows up for us and covers us. As we endeavor to stay centered on God, let us consider this daily. How can we practice thankfulness? How can we share that the testimony of meaningful ways God appears in our daily lives and others? Let us be encouraged that these are the moments that will shape our spiritual life, not necessarily large media events. We don't need Facebook, Instagram Live, Twitter, or CNN, or any of those other media outlets to have our own revolutions of our hearts and minds. You are enough. Lord, in your mercy, hear us all. Lord, please hear our prayer, oh Lord. For a church. Think about how the church has gone through immense change in the last year, and even now in such a virtual space. Through God's grace, we have been able to navigate these spaces of uncertainty. We don't need a parade or a big celebration to appreciate how all of this has affected our outlook on what church looks like. We pray not only that Jesus be present in our day to day, but also that we might be more aware of the ways Jesus will show up. 
whether on the road to Emmaus, at the table, or holding our families together, let us always seek Christ. Thank you to everyone who is making adjustments to keep this church alive. For people behind the scenes, editors, singers, um, writers, people sharing these services with their family and friends, and everyone else who helps make church happen this week. Thank you for your continued efforts to keep the ship afloat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Lord, please hear our prayer, oh Lord. For our people, every crisis in life is also an opportunity to turn to our beloved Savior in trust and complete abandonment as so to rest in his merciful hands. To rest in the hands of God means that we are secure despite maybe the uncertainties of life. It means that we are free to love God and each other despite the challenges that we face. It means we raise our our eyes to heaven rather than look down in fear. Be encouraged, people of God. We offer a prayer to those feeling loneliness or isolation right now. May he comfort and keep you. We now open up our virtual virtual spiritual space to the prayers of the people. Take this moment to offer up any prayers that you might have, either aloud or silently, you have to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Lord, please hear our prayer, oh Lord. We place all of these prayers, the ones we haven't prayed yet, and the silent meditations of our hearts at the foot of the cross. And we pray in Jesus' holy name, in the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Let the church say, Amen. Well, thanks, Taylor, for lifting all of that up in prayer. We appreciate it as always. Amen. Well, a few community announcements for the good of the order. Well, along the lines of prayer, if you have a prayer request, maybe something that you would like us to hold in prayer throughout the week or in the service or even both, uh, please don't hesitate to be in contact with us. It would quite literally be our joy and our pleasure to be praying for you. Amen. You may have also noticed that you received a second e-news this week uh, on Tuesday. Uh, That's an effort for us to be transparent and communicative with the congregation about where the ministry is and where the ministry is going, uh, because just because we are in the midst of a pandemic That does not mean that work isn't getting done and that the ministry is not moving forward. Amen. Uh, Also, just thanks for everyone who is collaborating and helping to make these services possible for uh, Devin and Taylor and Marissa and Camille, and also for the the partnership with Bridge of Peace in Camden to, uh, to do creative things in these interesting times. Amen. Please stand uh, and receive this benediction. Almighty God, bless us now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join us one more time as we sing, We've Come This Far by Faith. I know that's right.
we come this far, my friend. Just the other day, I heard someone say he didn't believe in God's word. But I can truly say that God has made a way, and He's never failed me yet. That's why we come this far, my friend. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.